he gives an example. He says this is a contradiction in the Quran that Allah highlights that we have created everything in pairs. Uh, Allah in Surah al dhariyat says verse uh, 49, وَمِن كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَا زَوْجَيْنِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ And from everything we have created pairs so that you may, um, so that you may ha take heed from this. Okay. So you may have some kind of... Uh, and then he quotes the verse of the Quran as well in Surah al -Ra'ad, uh which, which, which states that وَهُوَ الَّذِي مَدَّ الْأَرْضَ وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا رَوَاسِ Allah has laid out the earth and placed in it mountains and rivers. وَمِن كُلِّ الثَّمَرَاتِ And from all fruits جَعَلَ فِيهَا زَوْجَيْنِ اثْنَيْنِ He has placed two types of pears within fruits. Now... He says that, look, and Allah says, and indeed are that, uh, in that are signs for a people who ponder. Uh, he says, look, this, although it is true, a proper fruit is uh, something which has both male and female kind of counterparts, and they do reproduce like that, but there are several fruits which are hermaphrodite, so they kind of self-reproduce. And he gives certain examples. Uh, likewise, although most creatures uh, do have that kind of, they do have a gender, but there are some creatures who are asexual and they are just uh, parthenogens. So they just reproduce through parthenogenesis. Um, so self-reproduce, they do not have two genders like some lizards and things like this. Now, that is true. So is this uh, a contradiction in the Quran? It's not a contradiction because in language and in the Quran, and this is in language generally, when you are using, first of all, you are addressing a generic point. You are not trying to teach the taxo taxonomy of science. You're not trying to say, okay, this is a, a lesson on botany or a lesson on zoology or a lesson on, you're not trying to do that. You're just addressing people with general understandings. So you're just saying that, uh, generically because Allah is revealing the Quran to the people of Arabia in the 7th century addressing them for what they for a general understanding Allah is not trying to say by the way we have created peers in everything except there's a lizard in Mexico which has uh, yeah you know is it <laughs> that's not the, the, the purpose of the Quran you know and we have created fruits in peers except for this plant and this plant. That's not what the, the Qur'an is trying to do. That's not the nature of the Qur'an. So when the term kul, all, is used, that's not, it doesn't have to mean all. I know that may sound for a moment, but let me give you an example. If you go to Surah Al-Ahqaf, where Allah speaks of the people of Ad, uh, who uh, were arrogant and belligerent, and they um, condemning and, um, and violent towards their prophet that um, that Allah then mentions how they suffered their fate and that this kind of uh, <coughs> storm this kind of torrential uh, almost like a hurricane came their way and, and Allah mentions in verse uh, you've got here in verse 25 that this wind strong wind that came their way تُدَمِّرُ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ بِأَمْرِ رَبِّهَا It destroyed كُلْ كُلْ means all كُلَّ شَيْءٍ بِأَمْرِ رَبِّهَا By the command and decree of its Lord It destroyed everything فَأَصْبَحُوا لَا يُرَى إِلَّا مَسَاكِنُهُمْ So by, by dawn, by morning The only thing you could see The only thing you could see remaining for them was their was their houses so the only thing standing was their houses now th so if you go back it's saying to kulla shay destroyed everything so the only thing you could see left standing were their homes now that is not in any way some kind of uh, that is common usage so if I was, like we spoke earlier on about the tsunami, if somebody was to say that this tsunami was so, so vicious that it took everything, it destroyed everything. 
what they don't mean is if you say, oh, really, but here, here's a little pl plant. The plant's still there. Oh, it destroyed everything. Oh, look what I found. This, this was still left undestroyed. That's not how people use language. When they say in a general usage, when, they, when they're saying all, they could be, I mean, in certain cases, people could mean all, yes, when they're speaking generally, but when they have literary usage, addressing things like so when Allah says and we have created from everything peers he's not trying to say that and you will never find any species that will ever violate this law and this is a law of uh, the taxon uh, taxonomy of zoology or of botany or of th this is not what Allah is saying so that is not a contradiction so the person was like oh I found a contradiction in the Quran that is not a contradiction because the Quran was never sent as a book of science. It was never sent as a book of, it was a reminder. That's what it was. And in many ways, we as Muslims uh, are part of that problem that we, um, we kind of profess that we will own, we treat the Quran like it's here to teach us science. Like it's here to, somebody asked me the other day, uh, I, is it true dinosaurs existed because there's no mention of, <laughs> I thought he was taking the mick. I mean, for God's sake, the Quran is not going to speak about dinosaurs. The Quran is not interested in trying to teach you everything. It tells you, Siru fil ardi fandurud. Go out and search for yourselves if you want to learn. That's what the Quran teaches. It doesn't tell you, oh, by the way, you know, there were dinosaurs and there was a triceratops and there was this dinosaur and there was T Rex and. And T-Rex and <laughs> and these were herbivores and these were you know carnivores and and then this meteor came and <laughs> this is not Wikipedia mate <laughs> that's not what this is so my whole point is that the Quran was simply a reminder it has many gems in there and it doesn't, these things are not in any way kind of contradictions or why doesn't the Quran mention everything? Of course, it's not going to mention everything. 